Okay, so here we're going to take some derivatives using uh, what are called transcendental functions. And a lot of the functions that you've been working with are what are known as transcendental functions. Um, but really, at the end of the day, we're just going to use the rules we've seen, um, and the same rules apply. So we've got a few different derivatives here. Um, the first one I'm going to do is this natural logarithm of the square root of x squared plus 1 over x plus 3. Grab one other piece of paper here. Again, the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to rewrite this using properties of logarithms. Uh, it's going to make taking the derivative much easier. So recall that uh, we can write this as x squared plus 1 over x plus 3 all raised to the 1 half power. Well now my exponent, that 1 half, I'm going to bring that out front and then we would have the natural logarithm of x squared plus 1 over x plus 3. I'm going to kind of think about that as being in brackets, and you'll see why in just a second. So recall for logarithms, if we have division, we can rewrite that as subtraction. So I can rewrite this as the natural logarithm of x squared plus 1 minus the natural logarithm of x plus 3. And I'm sticking this in brackets here just because sometimes if you don't put it in brackets, people don't use brackets here, and then they forget to distribute the 1 half. So I put it all in brackets just to remind myself that I still have to distribute. So we have 1 over 2 times the natural logarithm of x squared plus 1 minus 1 over 2 times the natural logarithm of x plus 3. And now this is finally where I'm going to take the derivative. So the 1 half will come along. We'll get 1 over x squared plus 1. And then we'll have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of x squared plus 1 is going to be 2x. And then minus 1 over 2, uh, the derivative of ln of x plus 3 will just be 1 over x plus 3. Uh, the derivative of the inside will just be multiplication by 1. And if we want to, we can sort of rewrite this. Um, notice we have a 1 half times a 2, so that would cancel. The x would go to the numerator. We would be left with x squared plus 1 in the denominator. Um, the next part... Uh, the only thing in the numerator is 1, and I'm not going to multiply this out. I'm just going to leave it as 2 times the quantity x plus 3. So there is our derivative. Again, you know, a few steps in simplification, but it's much easier to simplify this at the beginning uh, as opposed to just taking the derivative straightforward and then trying to clean it up.